Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about respect while we take a look at the story of someone who needed help in a big way. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about respect. Which is showing others that they are important by what you say and do. In today's story, we're gonna hear about someone with complete power to do impossible things. So, I thought we should try something impossible. But if it's impossible, then we can't do it. This is just for fun. And if we can do it, then it, it's not impossible. Okay, seemingly impossible. Great, let's try it. Actually, I made a whole list of impossible things. What's the first one? Number one, it is impossible to lick your own elbow. What? I can totally do that. <laughs> Maybe? Uh, oh, I concede. Number two. It is impossible to sneeze with your eyes open. A two. Did it. No, you have to sneeze for real. Here. Try this. Uh, uh. A two. Did it. Still fake. You try. Eyes closed. <sighs> I need a tissue. <sighs> <sighs> Number three. It is impossible to fold a paper in half more than eight times. What if it's a really big paper? Okay, all right. Let's go from uh, that side to that side. Go, go, go. <sighs> okay, okay. I'll, I'll stay on this side and then we'll we'll come together. Get over there. Yeah, that side, that side. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Ready? One. Okay. Okay, this is one. Remember, keep one. track. Is it straight? It. Hold right. it. Let's hold it down. We got five, we got five, okay. I think we can get eight, I think five? so. Yeah, Okay. maybe. Six. Okay. Karate chop it. Hey, seven. Seven, okay, seven. okay, you got it, you got it, okay. Okay, seven. seven. I really thought we were gonna get eight. Number four. Wait, I got one. Number four. It's impossible to eat just one potato chip. Mm. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> See? Just because you have zero self-control doesn't mean it's impossible. I can totally eat just one chip. Here. These aren't even really that great. I mean, they're not even potato. They're like mushed corn, rice, and chemicals all toasted up and sampled out. Just tricking our brains into thinking they're salty 
crispy potato. Um, <coughs> is that all? I've got one more. What is it? You know how people say you're walking on eggshells around somebody? Uh, yeah? Walking on eggshells is a phrase that means to be very careful not to upset someone. You think it's possible to walk on eggshells without cracking them? Look how thin that is. Definitely impossible. But you get to do it anyway. Wait, what? You get to walk on eggs. Let's, Let's try, try it. I don't know about this. Okay, stand here in front of the egg cartons. Now, what now? Just step up on them. Just walk? Well, carefully. Here goes an omelet. The curved arch of the eggshell distributes pressure evenly all over the egg, rather than concentrating it on one point. That's why engineers even use arches in designing buildings and bridges. How do you feel? Sort of invincible, just like this egg. <laughs> That's exceptional. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in Matthew, the first book in the New Testament. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. And the town of Capernaum was like his home base. Everyone there knew about him. Not just the Jewish people, but the Romans too. Which is where our story starts. We're ready. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Hey Erica. Now, one of those Romans who knew about Jesus was a Roman centurion. This man was important. He commanded at least 100 soldiers who did exactly as ordered with no question. Forward! March! And halt! Oh, you there! Get me a fig and walnut sandwich at once! Yes, sir! With extra goat cheese! Right away, sir! The centurion was used to being obeyed, but though he was stern, he was also a kind man. He cared about the soldiers under his command and the servants who worked for him. One day, one of the centurion's servants became desperately ill. The man was so sick he couldn't even move. The centurion may have called for the best doctors, but no one could help the man. So the centurion did the unexpected. He went to a Jewish rabbi, Jesus, and begged for help. Lord, my servant lies at home and can't move. He's suffering terribly. Shall I come and heal him? Now you have to understand, going to the home of a non-Jewish person would make Jesus unclean. It was completely against Jewish custom, but Jesus cared more about the sick man than what people might say. It turned out the centurion did not ask Jesus to come to his home. Instead, he said, Lord, I am not good enough to have you come into my house. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. I, I myself am a man under authority. And I have soldiers who obey my orders. I tell this one go and he goes. I tell that one come and he comes. The centurion knew exactly how true authority works. He knew that when he gave a command, he spoke with the power of the Roman emperor and it would be carried out instantly. And he believed that Jesus' power and authority were so great that all Jesus had to do was speak a word from anywhere and the servant would be healed. And you know what? The centurion was right. Jesus turned to the crowd around him and said, What I'm about to tell you is true. In Israel, 
I have not found anyone whose faith is so strong. Jesus made it clear that anyone who has faith can be a part of God's kingdom, not just people who come from the right background. Then Jesus turned to the centurion and spoke the very word the man had hoped to hear. Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. Filled with joy, the centurion raced home. And sure enough, his servant ran out to greet him completely whole and healed, just as Jesus had said. The end. Wow, I mean like remote control healing? The centurion really got it. He had respect for Jesus as the final authority. So, what's our part in the story? Well, like we've seen, God can do the impossible with a single word. God is all powerful and all loving. That means God deserves our ultimate respect. God is most important. Our lives are full of all kinds of things, good things, but our time and attention should go to God first. You can talk to God throughout the day, in the morning when you get up, or when you're waiting for the bus or in the car. Or when you're at the lunch table or at dinner with your family. Right before you're about to go to bed. No matter what you face, whether it's a friend who's sick or a tough math test, God is the one who can give you the strength and patience and peace you need to get through your day. When you make a habit of putting God first, you can do anything. I think you got it. I'll see y'all next time. Bye, Bye Erica. <laughs> So here's the thing. Remember, God is most important. Okay, I want to do the thing. Hey, don't you need to take off your shoe? Your shoes. <laughs> um. Not too bad. I think you did maybe a little better than me. Maybe completely better than you. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time.